Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a great week. This week's video was inspired by some of the geological features of beautiful Acadia National Park. The coastline of Maine is very rocky and I thought it would be fun to create a simple little painting to interpret these rocks. Most of the time when I'm creating these little watercolor paintings, I am using paper that is much bigger that I then cut into a different size. This makes it easier for me to work on a smaller scale and it's also more economical in terms of paper. Um, some of the paper that I use can be a bit expensive and I find that I can get a little bit more bang for my buck if I can cut the paper into smaller sizes and create more paintings with them. I've never really shown this part of the process online before um, and I thought it would be fun to do it only because uh, I get a lot of questions about the size of paper I use and I want you to know that when I post um, that I have a certain tablet of paper that's the tablet I got the paper from but it's usually always cut into smaller sizes. I also wanted to show you the taping process and I love to work with white tape in particular because you can actually see through the tape when you're applying it over the paper so you can approximate the edge of that you're trying to tape. I tried using black tape at one point and um, I did use one roll of it but I actually really didn't like working with it very much. For one, it was very hard for me to see through. In fact, I couldn't see through the tape at all. And so I had to mark lines where I could tape the paper. And this just made, <clears throat> excuse me, this just made the process harder. Another inspiration for this week's painting was my color palette. I've pulled out a couple of the colors from my vintage pastel set and one of them is called Soft Lilac and the other one, this one here, is called Breezy. From the palette I'm more used to working with, I'm going to use Quinacridone Rose, Thalo Turquoise, Cobalt Teal Light, and my all-time favorite, Star Gold. I don't really have a set plan for my watercolor background. I'm basically going to use the colors that I've listed out to you. And just to start off, I'm wetting my entire page with my mop brush. And then I'm going to start the process of adding the colors. And I'll add them intuitively here and there and intensify the colors in different layers as I go along.
I love how the colors have blended together and I love the marks left by the salt. But I find the colors to be a little bit too light right now so I'm going to come back in with some more pigment to intensify my colors.
I'm happy with the background I've created so now I'm coming in with a pencil just to draw outlines for my rocks and it's going to be a little bit harder for you to see what I'm doing here. I'm just basically drawing in rocks anywhere where I feel that the lines are interesting and I'm going to cover the whole entire page. Now I'm going to come in with a little bit more paint um, and I'm going to create these little washes of color over each individual rock and I'm going to try to change it uh, from rock to rock uh, just to make them a little bit more different then um, I don't want them to all look the same. Not that they will look the same anyway because they're all in different places in <laughs> um, the painting but they still have a lot of uh, color uniformity and I want to change that up just a tiny bit just to, to sort of distinguish each rock from the other.
I've decided that I'm going to add a very light wash of magic green over just a few of the rocks. Um, I don't want to completely cover them. I want it to be a very transparent layer that has a little bit of shine without dominating um, the area. So I'm, again, I'm just making it a very light wash and you'll still see everything that's underneath, but when it catches the light, there'll be a little bit of a glimmer. I've traced the outline of each of the rocks using my fountain pen and now I'm going to come in with my brush pen and I'm going to paint in between each of the rocks. Now it's time for me to start playing with my star gold. When I first sort of imagined this painting in my head, um, again, not having a really clear plan of what I was gonna do for whatever reason, I was picturing that each of the rocks would be surrounded by a halo of gold. I thought with these colors that it would look really cool. And then when I started to actually paint the rocks and, and um, make them all sort of unique if you will it didn't seem to make sense anymore and it kind of looked like it wouldn't really work and so I'm gonna try to do something a little bit different I'm gonna come in add the gold with this fine liner brush and see how I feel as I add it I am not a hundred percent sure about the way I'm adding it right now but I do want the star gold to be in there because it's gonna look really really nice with these colors and this is the first time I'm working with this liner brush that's got sort of like a really long fine um, tip bristle and I'll be very honest I haven't ever worked with it because it always seemed to be so intimidating to work with something so delicate it seems and my hands are not always super steady <laughs> and I just thought that it would be a recipe for disaster but what I'm discovering is that I actually really love working with this brush I don't know if it's just that my hands a little bit steadier today or what's going on but I do feel like I can create these really super fine lines using this brush and I love it for that reason so I'll probably be using it again a lot more in the future especially now that I've broken the ice with using it.
I've added some gold here and there all over the painting and I really love that I was able to create these fine lines but ultimately I don't necessarily like how I don't know what the correct word would be um, I just really don't like how the lines are a little bit too defined maybe I mean it's nice to have fine lines and I think there's definitely a use for fine lines but I really felt like I needed to spread that gold a little bit more so I decided to come in with my flat brush and some water and I'm just gonna go over the rocks I may not go over all of the rocks but I'm gonna just make that decision as I go along I will however probably use this on most of them because I feel like spreading the gold and sort of um, washing it over the rocks makes it look a little bit more organic somehow I mean this is not an organic rep representation of rocks of course but um, I don't know it just I, it feels better <laughs> so you know you just got to do what feels better <laughs> and for me this feels better than just leaving the very stark um, defined lines I, I just wasn't feeling it but I am feeling that gold being swept across the rock and that feels a little bit better for me so I'm just gonna go with it yeah I'm definitely liking the look of this more subtle addition of gold than I was digging the very hard lines. I think this is softer and it just feels like it fits the mood of the painting a lot better. All right, it's now time to remove that tape. And this is always a part of the painting process that I really enjoy. I call it part of the painting process because for me, when I start to remove the tape, the finish that's the finishing touch to the painting seeing that clear like that clean crisp edge around the painting sort of finishes it completely for me and there's something really satisfying about watching that tape come off <laughs> This little painting started off being inspired by the rocky coastline of Acadia National Park and it sort of morphed into becoming a painting that for me is reminiscent of river rocks. When we used to live in Vermont we had a brook behind our house and I feel like it's it reminds me I guess of some of those rocks that I would see through the water. A process like this one for me is all about going with the flow and considering the theme of this little painting I think that's exactly what it needed. I hope you're now feeling inspired to create a little project like this one where you can just go with the flow be in the moment and enjoy every instant. Thank you for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating! <laughs>